Good morning, y'all, and welcome to our service at Madison Avenue Baptist Church in New York City. My name is Susan Sparks, and I'm the senior pastor here, and I'd like to welcome you to our service in your home. <laughs> it's obviously in your home because there's nobody here, as you can see from our pews in the background. I um, can't remember doing a service by myself in the sanctuary as my voice echoes through everything. Um, but hey, you know, this is how we roll now. And as unsettling as it may seem, I have some friends here that are going to help me through it. I brought my Moses action figure, always good for strength and power. Um, I certainly have to include pink plastic Jesus, always important in trying times. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but perhaps most importantly, I went through my closet and I found my most badass virus kicking boots that I could find, and I'm wearing them now. Here they are. Woo! And yes, I am doing yoga. Thanks for asking. <laughs> here we go, baby. Got the boots on. Good to go. Glad you're here. We are kind of jokingly calling this service MABC Late Night. Um, it's sort of like the, the late night shows as they've been piecing together different clips from people's homes to make a full show. Well, that's what we're doing now. Because of the shelter in place restrictions, all of us in this service today have filmed our parts independently. I'm in the sanctuary because I live next door, but the rest of the people participating all filmed it in their homes. Our music minister, Paul Stefan, laid down the tracks from the music, then our choir and all the different boroughs laid voices on top of it for your hymns and for your anthem. Our prayer is coming from Heather Ketchum in Tulsa, Oklahoma, our assistant pastor. And we have a number of special guests coming in. I won't bust the surprise, but we have folks coming in, MABC members that want to participate from North Carolina, from California, and from, yes, Kent in the United Kingdom. We are a global family, and remote or not, we are together, and we will stay together. You know, you might notice that I am in a different place, not behind the pulpit and a robe and all that stuff. Um, I tried a number of different views. This seems to be the best. It's the best sound. It seems to be the best lighting. So we're going to try it today. If you hate it, let me know, and I'm sure you will, <laughs> and I'm glad of it. Let me know if it's not working for you, and we'll try some other different angle or a different way of coming at it. But today's message and, and service is going to be done from right here. I want to give you a heads up about next week. You know, next week is the first Sunday of the month, and so it's communion. Now, there's no reason, at least in my mind, why we can't do communion remotely. 
So when you come to the service next Sunday, make sure that you have a little bit of bread and a little bit of juice or wine or whatever you use. Now, please hear me. Do not, I repeat, do not go to the store and buy it. That is not good. Use whatever you have in the house. It doesn't matter. The main thing is that we connect in that ritual as the body of Christ. And we will do that next week. And I hope that you'll join us. Today, as in all our services, I hope that you'll actively participate. And there's a number of ways you can do it. If you're on Twitter, then use hashtag MABC remote. There is an ongoing conversation on Twitter as the service continues, that people talk, they share prayers, they share um, stories and what's happening with them, be a part of it. If you're on Facebook, we are also broadcasting live on Facebook, so join that conversation, and that's ongoing as well. I'd love for you to send photos of you watching the service. This week we got photos of everything from people watching in their beds with their feet propped up <laughs> to pets watching. It's awesome. So we'd love to see where you are and what you're doing and how you're joining us this week. Most importantly, just remember each other this week. We're about to do the passing of the peace, and usually the passing of the peace is sort of a one-off thing we do each Sunday. I want that to change. Today, I want us to use the passing of the peace as a renewal to be able to take the passing of the peace out into the world for the week. So as you enter into this ritual, and as you listen to the beautiful introit that's about to happen, I want you to think of three people, three people that you can get in touch with this week, three people that you can pass the peace to throughout the week. Think about them, write their names down, and as we engage in this ritual, commit to contacting them. It's really important. You know, we may be separated, we may be remote, we may be isolated, but we're still family. And we're still family because we keep it together. We're stronger together. And let us remember that as we celebrate family and we celebrate community and pass the peace of Christ, please. Good morning, Madison Avenue Baptist Church. I'm Karen Rich. I'm singing to you from my studio here in Washington Heights. And my lovely husband, Chris Fecteau, is at the keyboard, though you can't see him in the shot. Uh, happy Sunday. This is a day of new beginnings. Everybody, it's the Huttos from North Carolina sending you all of our love and prayers and support back in New York. We miss you. Uh, we love you from afar, and we are really glad to be able to help lead you in worship this week by offering the call to worship. Good. You ready to do it? Mm-hmm. Wait, Dad, we're forgetting something. What What are we forgetting? Our hat. What about, oh, we need to take our hats off. Mm -hmm. We are so sorry we forgot to take our hats off. This is worship after all. I'm very serious. So now are we ready? Yes. Okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. In the days of its hustle and bustle. God is in the midst of the city. In the nights of its quiet and questions. 
God is in the midst of the city. When we feel alone or forgotten, God is in the midst of the city. When we walk in the midst of trouble, God is in the midst of the city. When the rulers of the earth set themselves on high, God is in the midst of the city. When we fear both the known and the unknown, God is in the midst of the city. For nothing on this earth or in the heavens above can separate us from the love of our God. Brothers and sisters, God is in the midst of the city, and it shall not be moved. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We love all of you. Bye. Thanks for this Have a chance. Nice day. Bye. Thank you. Karen, thank you for that beautiful introit. Oh, what a joy it is to have you singing with us again. Welcome back. And BJ and Hannah Ruth, oh my goodness, what a beautiful call to worship. Oh, it just, I don't know, just made me overheat a little bit. Just such beautiful words. So now I invite all of you to join us in our first hymn, We Gather Together. And for those of you who aren't familiar, we have our bulletin online, which is at our website, mabcnyc.org. And on that bulletin, there are live links for the hymns that lead to the music and the lyrics, as well as live links for the scripture. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. This is Richard Binder coming to you from sunny Astoria, Queens. Hope everybody's hanging in there out there. I'm gonna be singing hymn number 276, We Gather Together. That's hymn number 276. God's blessing to turn to a wisdom surpassing our own. The powers that oppress us now cease to distress us. O oh God, be present with us and make your will known. Beside us to guide us God, we perceive you, ordaining, maintaining the power of life. Yes, yours be the glory, let all tell the story. O oh God, be ever with us in gladness and strife. May all sing your praises, Redeemer triumphant. Defend us, befriend us, whatever may be. May your congregation escape tribulation. Your name be praised forever, O oh God, make us free. Take care, everybody.
your food against your sworn and he will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold Good morning! Hi! My name is Heather Ketchum. I am the assistant minister here at Madison Avenue Baptist Church and I am currently at my parents' house in Oklahoma. So greetings from Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's good to be with you all and I'm excited for this new format and, and figuring this out with you all. So welcome. For our prayer time this morning, I will begin by reading a prayer by Father Larry Tenzi, which is entitled Prayer for a Pandemic, which is very fitting for this time. And then we'll have our normal kind of pause and time where you can offer up your own prayers. And then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer just like we normally do. All right, please join me in a posture of prayer. May we who are merely inconvenienced Remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors, remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home, remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when the schools are closed, remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips, remember those that have no place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, Remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. We now take a moment to offer our concerns, worries, burdens, joys, little moments of respite to you, God, both silently and out loud. Special prayers for all of our medical workers, including Agnes from our live stream family, who works in a critical care hospital unit in Queens, and Rosalind Gordon, our sexton, Troy Gordon's wife, who is a registered nurse in Brooklyn. God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for always hearing our prayers. May we continue to pray as we go about our day and as we all press on through this difficult season. We close our time praying as we were taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. everybody it's Jenny Lindsay and I am here in northern Manhattan just enjoying the weather and I am here to sing hymn number 254 breathe on me breath of God number 254 This is Catherine. I'm recording this for you from my very sunny garden in Kent this afternoon. My thoughts and prayers are with all of my friends at MABC. This is a very, very strange time for us in the UK and I'm sure it is for all of you there. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Catherine. What a treat to have Psalm 46 read from a garden in Kent. Wow. So the title of my sermon today is God Does Not Shelter in Place. 
we are, um, I don't know, on day whatever it is of the pandemic. I've kind of lost track at this point. All I know is that it's Thursday, March 26th. I'm having to record the sermon today because we need time to edit it. And I have no idea what's going to happen between today and Sunday. But this is the message I got today. It seems like most of us, if not all of us at this point, are sheltered in place. We are in our homes. We are not leaving. And in addition to the fear and the anxiety and the just angst of the whole situation of staying home all the time, I've also, as an aside, found it kind of interesting to see what it is that I miss when I can't leave the house. Like, for example, kale. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong, Toby and I are very lucky we've got food. You know, we have a ton of stuff frozen and we have canned goods, but given the situation in the grocery stores and the fact that we're not really supposed to leave our houses, it's hard to get fresh produce, you know, and to keep it around. You can't go every couple of days to find it. And so because we don't have it, of course now I've already started thinking, wow, I wish we had some greens, which means I wish we had some kale which is hilarious because I hate kale. I hate it. I mean, before this pandemic, you couldn't pay me to eat kale. It's like eating a rose bush. I mean, you can't even fry it and make it good. And let me tell you something. If you fry something and it's not better, then that thing by default is evil. Just saying. So I miss kale even though I hate it. It's crazy, the things you miss when you can't leave your house. I mean, I miss kale. I miss kind of the surly people on the subways, because I'm not riding the subway. I mean, I miss sitting in outdoor New York cafes with the fumes of the buses as they pass by. <laughs> I miss walking down 34th Street crowded with tourists. You know what, actually I don't. I don't actually miss the tourists on 34th Street, so let's drop that example. I, I, no, I don't miss that. But there's a lot of things that I miss, and one of the most important things I miss is all of you. I mean, I miss being able to get a hug at the end of the service or before the service. I miss handshakes and sharing a laugh or holding a hand. And I'm so thankful for this technology that allows us to be able to connect in this way. It's just amazing what you miss when you can't leave your house. But there's one thing that I don't miss. You know, unlike kale, it's something that is always around. Unlike greens, it's always available. And it's something that I find that I don't have to miss because it's always with me. And that is the presence of God. You know, there's one thing, if there's one thing that's been hammered into my head during this whole crisis, it's this. God does not shelter in place. I mean, if you have any doubt about that, then go spend like 30 seconds reading the Bible because that's all it takes. And I'll make it easy for you. Let me just share a couple of verses for you. How about from Joshua, which I've quoted, I know, like a hundred times in the last three weeks. Joshua 1.9, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. How about Zephaniah 3.17? We hadn't talked a lot about Zephaniah recently. Zephaniah, the Lord your God is in your midst. And then there's Matthew 28, 20. Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. I mean, beautiful verses that remind us of God's presence. But of course, then there's our beautiful Psalm 46 that Catherine just read for us. You know, those words are almost haunting. God is our refuge and strength very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, should the mountains should shake in the heart of the sea. They're such beautiful words. But I'll tell you one thing, as I read that psalm over and over this week, the language that really got me was in verse 5. Verse 5 of Psalm 46. God is in the midst of 
of the city, and it shall not be moved. I mean, wow, you know, given the headlines of this week, the unspeakable suffering of the overcrowding, um, the sickness, the death that's happening in our New York City hospitals, to see an ancient scripture say, God is in the midst of the city and it shall not be moved. <laughs> so powerful. You know, some people might say, well, how can God be present in all this suffering? Well, first of all, we have no idea how God might be moving within and around all of the patients and doctors and nurses and medical staff. We have no idea, and we will never know. But we do know this. We know, because we can see this clear as day, that God is present because we see the acts of kindness in the middle of the suffering. God is present in those acts of human kindness. I mean, like the meals that are being delivered by just random citizens to the hospital staff and the medical folks all over the city and all over the country. People just coming in, bringing food and saying thank you. You know, there's stories about people leaving boxes on their porches across the country of, with critical supplies in the boxes like hand sanitizer or masks um, and with notes on it saying, please take and thank you for taking care of us. Those boxes are for UPS and for FedEx and for Amazon and for the, the United States Postal Service, people that kind of go unsung in these days. I saw a story about two kids, two little kids, one six and one nine years old, both were cellists, and they took their cellos and they put it on the porch of an elderly woman who was housebound, and they played her a concert. It's beautiful. I mean, here's my own personal story. I was in our apartment this week, obviously, and it was night, and I just happened to be walking by the window, and unlike most nights in New York City, um, of course, the buildings are very close and you can see people in their houses. But unlike most nights where people are out and about or still at work, everybody was home and everybody was moving about their apartments. And as I walked past my window, I noticed a family right across from us and they were sitting down to dinner and the mom caught, like kind of looked over and we caught each other's eye and she smiled and I smiled back at her and then her kids started turning around and then the whole family is looking at me. And a little boy that was part of their family motioned to me, and he said, he went like this. Are you okay? And I nodded, and I went, and he went, and so I went, and the whole family went. <laughs> and then they went back to dinner. I mean, it's just these kind of random acts of kindness where we see the presence of God. Scott Kelly, a retired NASA in, uh, astronaut who spent a year isolated in the International Space Station, put it like this. He said, seen from space, Earth has no borders. The spread of the coronavirus is showing us that what we share is much more powerful than what keeps us apart, for better or for worse. He went on to say, all people are inescapably connected. One of the side effects of seeing Earth from the perspective of space, at least for me, is feeling more compassion for others. As helpless as we may feel stuck inside our homes, there is always something we can do. Brothers and sisters, the evidence of God's presence among us and with us is seen every day in common acts of human kindness. And yet, it's still easy to get discouraged. You know, to say things like, well, why me? Why now? Why did this pandemic have to happen in my lifetime? You know, that light line of thinking is an utter waste of time. And we know that intellectually, yet we still say these things or think these things. You know, I like to think of the line out of J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, conversation between Frodo and Gandalf, and this, it goes like this. Frodo says, I wish it need not have happened in my time. So do I, said Gandalf, 
and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Brothers and sisters, just because we find ourselves sheltered in place, just because we find ourselves in a city that's now the epicenter of a global pandemic, doesn't mean that we can't still use the time given us for great things. I mean, think about Nelson Mandela, who was imprisoned for 27 years. What did he do during those years of imprisonment? Did he complain? Did he let anger or fear take him down? Did he give up? No, he did not. No, he prayed, he read, he thought, he wrote. He even got a law degree from the University of London Correspondence Program while he was in prison. He used the time in prison to prepare for the work ahead. The power of God is right here with us, right in our midst. And that power can overcome any human frailty that we might have, a frailty like fear or hopelessness or despair. All we have to do is ask for the help. All we have to do is ask that God prepare us for the work ahead. But we don't. We love to keep worrying. Even though the God's in our midst, we just keep on worrying. You know, let me break it down like this. I, I, I'll just put it like this. This is a non-theological, absolutely goofy pop culture example. Okay, so if you're expecting St. Augustine, it ain't happening, right? So here's the, here's the example. Imagine this. Imagine that celebrity chef Emerald Lagasse is living in your house, okay? Emerald, the chef, is living in your house. So if that's the case, would you wake up every morning thinking, oh my gosh, what am I gonna eat? What am I gonna cook? <gasps> what am I gonna have for lunch? What am I gonna have for dinner? Um, no, because you have in your home a professional chef whose gift is to create beautiful food. So you would ask Emerald, to feed you, you, every day of your life, for the rest of your life, and you would never again worry about food. Brothers and sisters, we don't just have Emerald living in our house. We have the creator of Emerald living in our house. We have the creator of all great people, all great things, all great places living in our house. I mean, this, is, this is a God for which nothing is impossible. So why in the name of that God would we not ask for help? Maybe I just should say, can I have an amen? Thank you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this week, when you start to feel lonely, when you start to feel isolated or disconnected, remember this. We are all intimately connected through the presence of God. That is the common thread that holds us together. That is the thread that can never be broken. God does not shelter in place. God is right here, right now with us. God is right here in this sanctuary helping me get through this broadcast by myself. God's going to be with me when I finish and go home and start craving kale again. God is with all of us, with Catherine in the UK in her beautiful garden, with BJ and Hannah Ruth and their families in Charlotte, with Jennifer and Nico out in California, with Paul Stefan and all of our choir throughout the boroughs in Manhattan. God is present. And God is with all of you right now. As you watch this service, God is present in your home with you. God is here in the midst of the city. In the midst of our city, God is present in those overcrowded hospitals and emergency rooms and medical facilities. 
God is present in all of the medical facilities around the world. God is present with our scientists and our researchers who are trying to find vaccines and cures like our own Tracy McMillan. Tracy, thank you for what you're doing. God is in our nursing homes and our homeless shelters and our bankruptcy courts. God is in our prisons. God is in our refugee camps. God is not sheltered in place. No, because God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, brothers and sisters, God is in the midst of the city. God is in the midst of our city. God is in the midst of all cities. And we shall not be moved. And the people said, I'm Jennifer Lee Snowden. I'm a singer-songwriter here in Los Angeles, California. But before moving here, I lived two blocks away from Madison Avenue Baptist Church for over 14 years. And they have seen me through some of life's highest highs and lowest lows, including two bouts of cancer. And I've always known that even if I'm on the other side of the country, their doors and their hearts are always open to me. And I think during this time of social isolation, we're feeling just how important community really is in our lives. So I encourage you, please, to give to this incredible organization of faith. The work that they do depends on our giving. So there are numerous ways that you can do this. It's very easy. You can go online to their website, mabcnyc.org. There's a little digital place where you can do that there, or you can do it the good old fashioned way by getting out your checkbook and sending in a check to the address listed on their site. You can also download the MABC app, and if those ways weren't easy enough, you can text MABCNYC to 77977 and follow the prompts. So, while you are going about getting out your wallets and following uh, those instructions, I would love to play a little song for you. This is a song that has gotten me through some of life's most difficult times, uh, and it reminds me that we're all in this together and that God never leaves our side. So this song is called Land of Hope and Dreams, and it's by one of my favorite artists, Bruce Springsteen.
Hi, this is Alexander D'Souza with the MABC Choir, and this is Hymn 494, that's 494, They'll Know We Are Christians. Take it away, Paul. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. We will work with each other, we will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We're so glad that you came to be a part of this service this morning. You know, a lot of people worked very hard to make this service happen. And I want to say a huge thank you, not only to the people who are in front of the camera, but to the folks behind the scenes. You know, this is an incredible day for our church, an exciting new path and a new format for Madison Avenue Baptist Church. And I thank you for what you've done to help us open that door. I also want to thank all of you who have come in live stream. You are as much a part of our family as everyone sitting, well, you know what I mean, I started to say sitting in the pews, but you understand. Please remember that this is a community of faith in which you are always welcome and you will always be considered family. And until we see you again, I share the words of benediction from the poet Henri Emile. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the, this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love, make haste to do kindness, shower abundant hospitality on friend and stranger. Walk in justice that you might follow the path of mercy and love. And may the blessing of God who comes to us unbidden, who for our lives was broken, in whose spirit we are guided, into wholeness and holiness, bless you and keep you from this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.